Okay, we've examined the high-low method. We've also done a scatter graph method. Now we're going to use Excel to do a least squares regression. If you're looking to learn the math of a least squares regression on your own, it's not that complicated, but it would take me about an hour, I suspect, just to go over how to do one. Uh, there's lots of great videos on YouTube to do on yourself, but I'll show you how to do it in Excel, and Excel does it uh, really, really quickly. So I've, I've just copied my data over into Excel. I've said, okay, there's my X. And there's my Y. And I'm just going to highlight these X and Y columns. I'm going to say insert charts. And under charts, there's scatter is this one. So I'm going to say I want a scatter chart, like just like that, scatter. Give me a scatter. And you can see this actually looks really similar to the chart that we produced ourselves. And as it should, right? Like it's the same data underlying it. If we did a decent job, uh, you know, we would relatively match up relatively well. They've got different grid lines drawn. You know, we had one every 10, they have one every 20, but it's, it's a very similar uh, chart uh, in, as it should be. So I'm just going to uh, ask Excel to add a line. So I'm going to say, give me a line, and Excel draws a regression line. So I say, I want this to be linear, and I tell it, look, when Excel draws a line, they're going to stop at my lowest point, which is 90, my lowest point on the x-axis. So I'm just going to tell, tell Excel to go back 90. Uh, so I said, forecast backwards by 90, and I'll say, okay, close that. So there's my trend line in Excel. It's the dotted line there. So actually, you can see it's intersecting right at 400. I was a little above. I was at 410. But the line it drew is similar. I'm actually very proud. Usually when I draw my line by hand, I'm way off. But I, I did a good job today, guys. Kudos to me. Um, OK, so let's see what this line actually is uh, as a regression. And so I'm going to, again, just right click my line. Uh, and I'm going to say format trend line brings this up and there's a, an option here right at the bottom it says display equation on chart yes I'd love to know the equation so I'll close that so here's the actual formula for a line sort of the mathematically best line you can get out of this data um, again I'm not going to get into the the computation of a least squares regression uh, but just tr uh, know that Excel draws a proper line here. I'm trying to make this thing a little bigger. Looks like you could grab the corners, but apparently not. Okay, well, in any event, uh, it, it should be legible to you. Uh, the, the formula for the line, <laughs> close, is y equals 8.1x plus 396. So it was right around where I was. I mean, I missed by just a little bit on the axis there, but this is a this is our formula for a line using the regression method. And remember what it means. Let's take a bit of a step back. It means it costs me on average $8, just over $8 a package, plus I have a fixed cost of, of pretty close to $400 per month. So just because I'm shipping so much, it costs me $400 a month. Each additional package is costing me around $8 per package. So heading back to our question, we have used the least squares regression method to calculate the cost formula. Uh, Lastly, are there any factors other than the number of packages shipped that may contribute to variation in shipping costs? And the answer here is, of course, right? Perhaps number of packages wasn't even a good variable, but there's so many other factors that go into your shipping cost. The first one that came to my mind immediately was the weight of the packages. If you're shipping a heavier package, it costs more. A lighter package costs less. Um, if you're shipping bigger packages, not necessarily heavier, just bigger, it takes more room in the bus and the plane and whatever else they're, they're shipping it on the trucks, uh, absolutely that will affect your shipping cost. The method of transportation, if it can be done by, by road or rail, that'll be cheaper than by air. Uh, these are all things that affect shipping costs. Just fuel prices, oil prices in, in our world will affect your shipping costs. Uh, all of these are factors in shipping costs above and beyond just the number of packages you shipped, just the raw number of packages you shipped. Uh, so 
the the point of this was just to say, look, number of packages shipped is only one small factor. It might be the main factor, right? More packages, you're going to pay more. Less, fewer packages are going to pay less. But there are many other factors that impact the shipping cost. All right. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, and please stay tuned for the next video.